so to your point, the, the mind is the most powerful thing. Look at what you've accomplished. I mean, you quit smoking. That's hard for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You quit sugar. Uh, you lost 70, 80 pounds now. Um, what is your diet today? What do you, do you sustain yourself on a prescribed paleo, keto, or do you just understand keto and so you dip your foot back in uh, intermittently? Well, basically what I'm doing is I'm living the keto lifestyle. And um, I, I, and that's what I call it. I, I, you know, a lot of people, and when I've read a lot of stuff where they start off, and it's a ketogenic diet. It's really, it's a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. um, because if you quit doing the ketogenic diet and you go back to what you were eating before, yeah, it's going to go twice as fast right back on you than it did to take it off. I've, I've been doing keto for about three years. And am I keto 100% of the time? No, I'm not. Most of the time I am. What keeps me coming back every time I go off keto and I eat a certain a, a diff a bad way for a day or two? You feel it. You feel it. You go, holy crap! I'm not willing to live my life like this. No, you're not. And when people say I can't give up my cookies or I can't give up, look, <laughs> when you feel as good as you feel and sleep as good as you sleep and your brain's as sharp as it is, and uh, that to me is is. 10 times more valuable than any cookie. And you know, and you touched on something a little earlier I would like to uh, expand yeah. on a little bit, Doc. You were talking about uh, things being documented. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's a hundred analogies that I'm sure that we could use of, you know, would you do this if there was all this documentation versus zero documentation over here? Your choice, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, but the keto diet, this, there is a lot of information and there's mm -hmm. a lot of positive information. And, and I'll go back to when I was young. I, like I said, we had a huge family, Italians and everything, and they were always a manja, manja, manja. Yeah. So, you know, I grew up being a little meatball, right? Yeah, so yeah. it was very hard for me. And I've probably seesaw dieted most of my adult life. And that's okay. probably another reason I had stomach troubles um, and issues. Yeah. But the thing about it was, Every time somebody came up, still to this day, look at the TV, look at the internet, everything. Weight loss, weight loss, do this, do this. Right. Miracle, miracle, miracle. There is no miracle. Right. There isn't no miracle. You have to diligently decide what you want to do with your but life. But that's not sexy. It's not sexy. It's not, not easy. sexy. <laughs> but, you know, the, the people that we see have successful long-term weight loss, it's amazing. I'll have a woman come in and she'll go, I've only lost eight pounds. Over what time frame? Two months. That's a pound a week. Yeah, that's good. That's really aggressive weight loss. <laughs> and yet if I say, okay, let's reverse it. You're going to gain one pound a week from now to the end of the year. <sighs> oh, my God. Now, wait a minute. Why is that dramatic and losing one pound a week isn't? It's not about how fast you lose the weight. It really isn't. I no, it's not. I hate to bust your bubble. I know it's not sexy. If you're losing, if you're losing on a week-to-week -week basis and you're changing your lifestyle, if you're changing this this is what sustains it, right? Anybody can lose 20 pounds in a month, anybody. But the way that you lose it, if you didn't change the way you think, believe, and function, if you didn't get inside your head, you're gonna regain that weight. And that's exactly what you're, what you're speaking to. So you've really, you've had a gun put to your head in the form of appendiceal cancer to make you change. Yeah. yeah. But the, the result is you did, and it's, it's, it's sustaining itself, and I can't imagine you ever going back. I mean, just knowing no. you as I do. No, there's no way. Tell me about, so one of the things we do, what's your blood sugar of late? Have we checked it in the last uh, uh My blood months? sugar, uh, well, I've been doing running that. Uh, You're doing the circle. Yeah, I was doing that Libre. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I've been running, I've been in, um, I haven't been over 105 since I started doing it. Okay. So again, we started at 142. What we're talking about is you're wearing a device. You have it on now? No, I okay. I put one on uh, tomorrow. It's a simple little disc. You attach it to the arm. It's got a little filament that goes under the skin, and it can measure your blood sugar 24 hours a day. I did one about a month ago, and I tracked. What did my blood sugar? You could just take your your phone, yep. hold it up to the dot. It goes beep, and it tells you what your blood sugar is without pricking your finger or having any kind of discomfort. I love the little device. I find it remarkable, and I've, I've used it on a few patients now, and every single one has come back and go, oh, my God. I can see what my food's doing. I can see what exercise is doing. I can see. So what's been your experience with that? that I, I, to be honest with you, I was looked at you when you said that. And I'm like, what? Really? My sugar's <laughs> down? What? Come on. Really? But when I put it on, I loved it, actually. I, I, it, it's neat because, you know, you're like, well, all right. 
So maybe if I eat something different today, let's see if it changes my blood sugar. Or maybe I'm going to eat more today than I did yesterday because I'm hungrier today than I was yesterday. How's it going to affect my blood sugar? Yep. All your questions are answered. Yep. Okay, without having to sit down and write everything down, it's just too simple not to do. Right. What was, what was the biggest surprise? As you're checking your sugar, what made your sugar go up that surprised you? And what made your sugar go down that surprised you? Well, I'll tell you what. I've pretty much been in range, I think, since I did this whole thing, now that I really think about it. Okay. I think my highest blood sugar level was 124. Okay. Um, and it was a day after we had a family feast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's the highest yeah. that it's been. But, you know, immediately uh, everybody else is sitting down and I'm walking around, you know, staying active because that's, that's how you burn it. Yeah. You know, Don, I'm not going to eat and just sit down in front of the couch and go to sleep. So, and that's another thing. Yeah. You know, it I, plays I, into it. I can top your 120 or 125, whatever it was, with when I would exercise intensely. Yes. And by that, I'd go on a bike ride with a group and we're going at a good clip. Mm -hmm. and we'd be out for two or three hours. My blood sugar would elevate to 140, 145 while I'm on the bike. I'm on the bike. Really? And I'm, boop, checking my numbers. I'm going, holy shit. Wow. But, but think about that. Your your whole body, all your muscles, you're you're pedaling hard and you're working and your muscles are saying, more fuel. Yes. And so your body begins to liberate glycogen. It begins to do gluconeogenesis. And I was shocked by that. My blood sugar go up to 143. But then, the, and you're going to, I know what you're thinking. So Dr. Huber, <laughs> you're saying don't exercise. It's no. bad for your blood sugar. No. But then... When you get off the bike and your body recovers, you just made your muscles more efficient. Mm -hmm. And now for the rest of that, whatever, many hours or days, your blood sugar is going to be under better control. I also found that fasting elevated my blood sugar for the same reason, gluconeogenesis. The body feels a little bit of stress. There's no, there's no readily available fuel. So it begins to break down muscle, gluconeogenesis, to make sugar. So if you fast for 24 hours, I would see it run around 100. Versus if I'm doing ketogenic, I'm in the 80s or 70s even, right? So I'm eating food, but I'm eating fat. My body's cool and groovy. If I, if I fast, a little bit of stress, a little more sugar, and if I jack it up on the bike, and I intentionally did this, you're going to say, ah, you, I intentionally did this. I checked my sugar, and then I sat down with a bowl of ice cream. Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> and I measured it during, during and I measured it after. after. It's, yeah, it's on your arm. That's why I keep doing this. <laughs> and I measured it after and only went up to like 121, 25. And I, so my staff was going, so you're telling me it's healthier to eat ice cream than to ride your bicycle. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So um, lots of weight. Sugars are much better. Weight is much better. You're on zero medication. Mm -hmm. at this time we used a few things during your journey a few supplements correct we did things to stimulate your immune system we wanted your immune system to go kill that cancer right and correct. that's what happens we all have killer cells we use things to amplify your killer cell activity we certainly got sugar out of the body because that feed cancer and so all we did was tip the dynamic in your favor that your body would be able to do that mm -hmm. okay um I can't wait to see what happens in the next year because I know the journey's just going to continue. <laughs> well, and the other thing while we're just sitting here talking along is that, uh, you know, as we were just talking about the exercise thing, you know, in the beginning, you know, once again, we're going back to this long journey. You know, you are got to wrap your head around it. Then you got the diet issue and everything and the exercise. Don't try to do gung-ho 100% on everything starting out because you'll quit. You will quit. It'll be overwhelming. You'll get depressed and you'll quit. You've got to, got to take and wrap your head around the first thing, get, get what the docs tell you to do and do that first, you know, and then start to change your diet a little bit of time. You know, you find out that your shopping habits will change. You'll be reading mm -hmm. a lot more labels. Yes, you will. Okay. And that kind of thing. But you know what? It's all in the beginning. It's like anything. You got to start somewhere. And then once you get started and then these things are good and you know, oh, well, that's my normal thing. I don't have to read anything anymore. Yep. You know, it becomes normal shopping. I like again. your locomotive analogy. Right. But it you know what? What I found out yeah. from my experience in this life, there's not a lot of people that like change. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do. People, yeah. <laughs> I, I do it. too. It's when change I do. is all there is. Right. I mean, now. 
now, I mean, but yeah. you know, people feel like they're in a bad way, and you got you know, people. Oh, you got to like go to the doctor. You got to change. Wait, what? What's wrong with me? What? I got to change. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, no, and I want to. I want to go back to one thing before we close out. You sure. talked about the cost. You know, chemotherapy, and we'll talk another time about the industry of oncology because it truly is an industry. It is. And there's some factoids that have come out. I'm, I'm going to share with you, if, if you really want to begin to learn more about how to treat cancer uh, beyond the classic approach, um, Ralph Moss has written several books. There's this Dr. Raza, I recently have read her book. It's called First Cell. I'm going to put a slide up to show you the cover. And so I'm going to quote some things that she uncovers in her book that I found fascinating. If, if you have a simple cancer, right, we catch it early. You got a, you got a lump on your breast. You got a prostate a simple early cancer, we're pretty good. About 62% of the time, we're going to treat that cancer and you're going to be just fine, right? And hopefully, hopefully, their insurance covers it better than yours did. <laughs> but if you come away with a metastatic or uh, a higher, a higher uh, grade or stage cancer, where it's now in the lymph nodes or it's metastasizing, the odds of us having success go down dramatically, mm -hmm. dramatically. So the, the key there is what? Early, early recognition, early finding it. Here's the thing that's sobering. 42% of families that find a late stage cancer, the treatment of that cancer is gonna financially bankrupt the family, 42%. So just like you said, oh, what's that surgery cost? Oh, 1.2 million, yeah. how much is the chemotherapy? $800,000, yeah. those numbers are, I'm sorry, they're bullshit. Yeah, it's they wrong. are. It's wrong. It's an industry. We're going to talk a whole other time about the industry. We cannot continue to bankrupt families no. trying to get simple cancer care. Now, what does that say to me and you? Don't get cancer in the first place. <laughs> Don't smoke. Don't take a proton pump inhibitor like a meprazole for five years. Don't gain 80 pounds. Don't eat sugar. I know we all do. I know we all do. But if you don't have cancer today, great. Start making these changes now, right? Start making these changes now so you don't end up having the joy ride that you guys can enjoy, Nick. Yeah. And be, and and I'm going to show some things that we can do. I'm going to do another talk. Maybe you can help me with that. Sure. Uh, I'm going to do another talk talking about how do we prevent cancer. Well, certainly, there's diet, there's exercise, sleep, stress, uh, plastics. One of the things that I see every day that people do is they grab their plastic water bottle. Hey, Doc, I'm drinking water. Yeah. And they drink from their plastic water bottle. Plastics need to be out of your life. Sugar, wheat, starch, carbs, out of your life. Yes, we're going to have some tonight. But in general, those things need to go. In adopting a ketogenic diet, it is a mental journey, isn't it, to understand how can eating this way feel good? Well, I'll tell you, it, 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 <laughs> I'm at that point now because it's fun. Yeah. Now I'm to the point where my body feels good. I'm healthy again. So I realize this works and it's fun. You know, now it's, now it's just more fun. And I look for new things, you know, and new recipes and that kind of stuff, just like I would have, yeah. uh, you know, any other way. I'm just doing a different style eating. Shopping is still the same. No caloric restriction. Eat as much as you want. Yeah. Right. Nobody's saying you have to go hungry. No. But just making different choices. Different Do choices. I look like I'm hungry? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to close out with, my good man? No, I just want to okay. let uh, just let people, you know, once again, I can't stress enough that, um, you know, there there are things out there that um, that are extremely beneficial um, to your body. And, and I, I will say that, you know, the septus, when you get septic like that, it's mm -hmm. one of the hardest things Mm -hmm. to recover from because mm -hmm. they weren't sure if I was going to make it at that time. And I yeah. mean, I, I mean, it, dark days, just dark days. And, oh, um, you had a lot of dark days. and you know, it, it's, it's one day at a time, one day at a time, you know, just remember we were all born. We had to crawl before we walk. And that's mm -hmm. just the way you have to look at it. You know, that's why they're called old adages because they are. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I want to thank you for being thank here. You. I, if, if anybody's catching late onto our little discussion, I mean, you had an aggressive cancer in your gut. You didn't have surgery. You didn't have chemo because things just got left of center. And you're sitting here cancer-free, 80 pounds lighter, diabetes gone. All your vitals have dramatically improved, not because of any heroics I did, heroics you did right here. It all happened right there. My hat is off to you forever. 
Thank you. You will always be an inspiration to me that anything is possible. I hope I'm an inspiration <laughs> to you because I, I, this is real stuff, you, you know, and there I went through it. There are people listening to this right now that are resonating with, with what you, where you were, and they're looking at you saying, I, I got to do that. I got to do that. Right? So. That's you. it. Thank you, got you it. my good man. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Got so, it. Let's go have a good weekend. There you go. All right. You got it. Thank you. All right.